Walter Payton, soon to be souvenir books. See Walter Payton break the record. Her name. Who's next? 1984 was the year that saved pro football. On October 7th, Walter Payton was set to break Jim Brown's iconic career rushing mark. Quick pitch to Walter, looking for the record. Cuts back. He's got it. Walter Payton becomes the national football league all time leading rusher. This should have been a coronation, right? But if we loop back to pregame footage, Sweetness's sweetest moment was really more of an afterthought. The week that was to be his alone began for Walter Payton in the shadows, off by himself. As he searched for a different kind of daylight, stalking deer, all Chicago is seeing set its sights on Wrigley Field and the Cubs, who are fighting for their first pennant since 1945. I mean, Walter, that's exciting, but this is Cubs. This was, I mean, 39 years we've waited for this. I'm all set for Peyton doing it. I'm sure he will this week, but it doesn't matter as much as the Cubs right now. The Cubs finally being good was a big deal, maybe even as big as Monday Night Football, which was really a big deal back then. It was just like a part of uh, a way of life in America. Everyone would look forward to it. You know, you kind of build your dinner around it and whatever else. The night after Peyton set the rushing record, Monday Night Football featured a matchup of the NFL's best team, the 49ers, and the team from the biggest media market, the Giants. He wanted to spike it, didn't he? He thought about oh, yeah. it. Is this against the rules or what? But on that night, America changed the channel to a TV movie starring Farrah Fawcett. No, my bed isn't too hard. The story of the burning bed was based on a nonfiction book. It was a true story of a woman who had been abused for many years, and she set a fire which killed her husband. So the thought was, guys are going to be watching football. Do something where you get as many women as possible. Nobody really thought it was going to go through the roof. 75 million viewers watched all a part of it. Cable was, was much less important. So a lot of people only had the three networks and PBS. So if people weren't watching football, they were going to watch something. And I guess it was going to be Farrah Fawcett burning a guy in a bed. No! 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 Over one third of all U.S. households tuned in to the burning bed. And Monday Night Football recorded its lowest rating in history. That's it. Don Meredith was here. He'd be singing the party. <laughs> <laughs> The league has become, in the, in the minds of many, a, a, a series of mediocre teams with a bunch of double-knit coaches all in the same uniform with the same game plan. Does it have much of a future? There will always be a place for the National Football League and a big place in the sports spectrum of this country. Because of a multiple number of factors, will it ever get the ratings that it used to get in the halcyon days? In my opinion, no. The NFL also continued to have its space invaded by the upstart USFL. In its second year, the USFL landed its biggest crowd. Numbers like that are bringing the league to Miami. City commissioners approved a deal this morning that should put a USFL team in the Orange Bowl by 1986. Don Shula would like to come, Brent. He'd like to come to New York. One of the little obstacles is he'd like an apartment in a building that I have on Fifth Avenue called Trump Tower. And that's something that's more valuable than money. We just bought this hotel two, three days ago. We did it for this news conference. We thought you people would do <laughs> Donald Trump and the USFL made plans to move to the fall. If God wanted football in the spring, he wouldn't have created baseball. Well, we had a good league, but I always said spring football will never work. It'll never be first class. And if you look at a building like this, it's 57th and 5th. It's the best location right next to Tiffany. And that's what I've been all about, doing the best. And spring football was not that. And I thought if we moved to the fall, we'd create tremendous problems for the NFL, and something would happen. On October 17th, the USFL filed a billion-dollar antitrust lawsuit against the NFL. Do you see this as an attempt on their parts to maybe force a merger somewhere down the line? That's, uh, that's all that Donald Trump and... Uh, two or three of those immensely wealthy men have in mind. Well, I would have liked to have been an NFL owner if I could have gotten in inexpensively. And frankly, this was a way of getting as one alternative into the NFL very inexpensively. So we're going to be around for a long time, fellas, and we're going to win our antitrust case. And good luck to everybody. Thank you very much. I hope the hotel's taking good care. Thank you very much. 
Sports Illustrated capped the worst month in NFL history with a devastating diagnosis from Dr. Z. Coaches like to tell you that they can't comment on a breakdown in a game until they look at the films. Well, Paul Zimmerman of Sports Illustrated is a writer who doesn't like to hit the typewriter until he looks at the films. You know, the written word was king. We didn't have an internet back in the 80s. This is pre-ESPN being gigantic, pre-explosion of media. When Sports Illustrated came out and made a pronouncement, the game is boring, it needs to be fixed, people in the NFL really paid attention. Football, it wasn't going down the tubes, but it had flatlined. Zim, what is the, uh, the state of the game today, the NFL? I think football has gotten away from its essence, and its essence is a certain amount of toughness. Uh, I don't like corporate type people. I don't like guys with hair dryers. So when they came out and said, what's wrong with the NFL? Everybody paid attention, especially all the television executives in New York. They started to get nervous, you know, nervous. Hey, 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 whoa. Well, that kind of cover on Sports Illustrated is Pete Rozelle's nightmare. This is the thing he wakes up in the middle of the night screaming about. 